An important part of our test management process with Quality Center is tracking which releases and configurations our test cases are executed against. So for example, when we run a test, we should record the fact that it was executed on Windows XP with IE9 and that it was executed against a specific version, version 1, and build of the product that we're working on. So what we're going to look at here is firstly defining a release and a cycle and linking that to test sets and runs under the test lab area. And then secondly we'll look at how we can factor other aspects in like configs into these runs in various different ways. So with Quality Center we define releases and in this example we've got releases 10.5, 10.6, 10.7 etc. And those releases are going to track a group of changes we might be making to a product under development. And the metadata we track as part of that release record can cover things like the name of the release, the release ID, uh, start date and end date, and various other custom fields if we add those in too. Within those releases then, we can define cycles, where a cycle is a logical group of activities or tasks for the product that we're working on. Each of those cycles, we then assign requirements and tests, test sets and defects so that we can then track the status and the progress of those artifacts within this specific cycle. So in this specific example we've got cycle 3 within release 10.8. Under the requirements then we can add or link uh, folders of requirements or individual requirements by assigning to release or assigning to cycle. These requirements then and the status of those requirements will then show up in various reports against the specific releases and cycles. From a test perspective then we can link folders of test sets to releases of cycles as well and in this example we've mirrored the folder structure for our test sets to the same release folder and cycle structure under the releases area. This just makes this the, a little easier to manage. So under release 10.8 we've got a folder and within there we have the different cycles. Each of these folders can then be linked to or assigned to a cycle. So I click assign to cycle, select the release, drill down and select the specific cycle. That test set will then show up under our releases so that we can see that we have one test set folder linked or assigned to this particular cycle. When we run the test cases within the test sets, for example new feature X test set here, we can then track those tests in terms of the operating system, the service pack perhaps, and the build identifiers. So this is essentially the config ID that we're running the test against. So if we pass all of these test steps within the test case, and in that particular run, then we will see test results under test runs for this particular cycle logged against the build os environment environment variables that we set at runtime. So for example we can see that this has been run against cycle 3 and if we add other fields to this we can see the build number and the OS service pack. If you have other configuration items that you wish to track against a result then you can add those as custom fields. There are a couple of other ways that we can track how the config that we run against is recorded. I mean we've seen how we 
track config information against the specific test result records. But another way to approach this is under the test sets library to create multiple folders of test sets and label those against specific configs. So for example, if I wish to run all of these test sets against config1, I might call this test cycle for config1. And if I have another config, I could copy that particular test set and I may then call this test sets folders that are assigned to that particular cycle we can select that and then under the test lab test sets view we can see all of the test sets that we have assigned to that particular cycle and as we run those different test sets each test set will have its own different set of test results and will be tracked against that cycle 3 again there is a third way to track configurations and that is under the test plan area. When you edit or create a test case you can define test configurations for the test case. We like to think of this more as test variations rather than configurations but it's a complex topic that we cover in a different video that we've created for Quality Center. So in essence then what we get out of recording this information is that we can see all of the historical results from the perspective of a config. We can see the progress of that config. So for example, we can see that if we have an excessive number of failures against a specific config, we can identify that config. And we also get visibility of the test cases that were run against the different versions of a product and configs as well. So we can identify where a failure surfaced and where that failure was fixed.